Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for Mars and Virgo. I'm doing a series of Mars and the different astrological signs. And if you don't know what sign your Mars is in, I have provided a link below this video that will take you to an astrology website that will have a list of all of the dates of all the different signs. And if you happen to be born on certain dates, Mars will have changed signs on that particular date. And you will need your time of birth to find out exactly what you are. However, you probably will have attributes of both signs. That's because you're on the cusp. And so you can listen to both signs and probably identify with both of them. So let's just talk, first of all, what Mars represents. Mars represents your ambition. Ambition means different things to different people. So we can't just lump everybody together in that particular area. It also re reflects your, I don't know if, if I would say desirous, desiring nature, and so the, th the things that you desire, now that's not going to necessarily be tangible. I'm not talking about, unless I'm talking about Mars and Taurus or something like that. But the idea behind wanting something, why do we want something? And how do we go about it? How do we go about getting what we want? That is really what Mars is um, going to describe, um, whatever sign it's in. So Mars is also a person's libido or sex drive. And again, this varies from sign to sign, from person to person. And um, their attitude towards sexuality and things like that. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But I just wanted to talk about the general traits. If we think about what Virgo is, Virgo is a mutable earth sign. So the mutability makes Virgo flexible. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So even though Virgo is an earth sign and you think it would be totally into things that are tangible, it's also into ideas because Mercury represents communication and everything that that entails. So if you combine the two, tangibility, or you could call it even like practicality, things that are um, of a more earthly, earthy, um, 3D, I don't know how to put it, things like that. And then the intellect, Virgo people in general, if I'm talking about sun in Virgo, moon in Virgo, or Mars in Virgo, tend to gravitate towards things that have value in their life. In other words, not things that are kind of frivolous or don't something that they can't really use on a day-to-day -day basis. So if a Virgo person, if a Mars and Virgo person is driven to learn something, because again, with that Mars, we're talking about the drive. And so there may be intellectual pursuits that the person is engaging in too. They're not going to tend to like go into basket weaving unless they plan to sell baskets. So if they go to a university, chances are they're going to really factor into the equation whether or not they can use the degree. Or if they take out a book from the library, the information, can I use this? There's a, there's a real constructive bent with Virgo. And this is where Virgo differs from the other sign that is ruled by Mercury, which is Gemini. So people with um, a prominent Gemini may learn for the sake of learning. But with um, Virgo, that's not the case. Their learning or their, yeah, their knowledge is something that they typically want to apply to better their life or to better, uh, 
better other people's lives. One thing that we have to look at is what house Virgo represents in the astrological chart, and it happens to be the sixth house of health. So health can also encompass nutrition and physical uh, health. I mean, you know, physical fitness can be that as well. The sixth house is also the house of work and by extension service. So again, these are practical activities that affect the body. If you think of the tarot, you think of the pentacles and all of the things that are part of this world um, and uh, the material manifestation, money or the body and with the uh, Virgo, it's going to be the health, so the body is connected to that, obviously, and also service, which is really a tangible, tangible evidence of, you know, an energy expenditure, if you want to look at it that way. So there's always this modest, humble quality of Virgo as the servant, because the sixth house is a servant. So with Mars and Virgo, um, unlike Mars and Leo, which is just like, look at me, look at my, per, you know, my sparkling personality, look at all my talents that I have. Uh, Mars and Virgo is how can I serve you? And how can I do the best job possible? Virgo is a sign of the perfectionist. So no matter what a Mars and Virgo person is doing, chances are they want to get it right. They're not going to be shoddy in their workmanship. And they will look at other people with a jaundiced eye if they are doing things um in a haphazard way because uh, Virgo is all about being organized as well. And so everything has a place. Everything should have a function. So like in a Virgo house, it, you know, Mars and Virgo person, if they're going to buy something, it will probably be functional rather than, you know, they have that uh, term uh, form versus function. And Virgo is going to prefer for the functional quality of something, not how it looks. And, um, and this can make them quite um, interested in living a very simple life because um, Virgo people, I think, tend to favor minimalism. And I know I've been saying Virgo people is almost like I'm talking about the sun in Virgo. But remember, or I will say that I believe that a lot of these placements, whether it be the sun in Virgo, I have the moon in Virgo. So all of these things are going to be similar, regardless of where your Virgo is in. And you may have multiple positions. You may be listening to this and your sun is also in Virgo. It, it does there may be like, like shades of difference because the planetary influence will affect how it is expressed with Mars and Virgo. There is a strong drive to do certain things. Now this is going to be significant if the person has a son in Leo. Um, well, maybe not so much. Leo's a hardworking sign. Um, let me think of a sign where it might be a little bit more Okay, well, like if somebody has a sun in Libra and they have Mars in Virgo, they may be less interested in appearances, um, like I was just talking about function versus form. They may be less enamored by something looking good and they really need it to work well. Um, so they may buy clothing based upon how well it performs how well it fits, how well it's, how durable it is versus, oh, wow, this is really cute. So 
that may be more significant for certain signs that are not associated with some of those types of traits than it is for, um, well, you know, with Leo, if the, somebody has a son in Leo and they have Mars in Virgo, they may be a little bit reticent about pursuing things. They may not have the confidence that you would associate with Leo when it comes to things that they have to show off their talent by performing, like on the job, for instance. They may be a little bit um, self-critical uh, compared to the average Leo person. They may be a little bit um, more critical of others than you would expect because usually Leo is just warm, magnanimous. They tend to see the best in everybody and everything positive. And um, sometimes Virgos can be harping on little flaws because of that uh, perfectionism that can just drive them batty. One thing about Mars and Virgo is that the person has to watch for o OCD tendencies, obsessive compulsive, where the perfectionism takes on a life of its own and becomes like that compulsive need for perfectionism. That's what OCD is. Um, it's very liberating to do well, but don't worry about doing your best. And this is coming from a moon in Virgo person, to, uh, to those of you who have Mars in Virgo, because it can still affect somebody with Mars in Virgo um, very much to to feel like they're not measuring up to what they want to accomplish. And their ideal may be too uh, hard to reach. And the more that a person is concerned about being perfect, the less likely they are go they're going to even try. So it's very liberating when a person can put that aside and just do. Sometimes, you know, this comes from the past, maybe parents or teachers that are writing people, uh, children, and trying to get them to, you know, write their letters better and, and do things uh, with more skill. And it really inhibits the kid. And, and actually, um, Virgo is very critical, but it's also very sensitive to criticism. When it comes to Mars, one of the things that I didn't mention at the beginning is that Mars is also about how we express anger. And I would also say it's about our attitude towards anger as well. Virgo is not a sign that is a hothead. It's an earth sign. It's also a mutable sign. So mutable signs tend to, because of flexibility, be more open to another person's point of view. And usually how anger is expressed with Mars and Virgo is very peevish. You know, somebody who may criticize, may have a little bit of a um, hissy fit in terms of like, just, I'm not talking about getting um, enraged. I'm talking about complaining and things like that. Bitching, you know, it's not going to be so much the, um, the type of over the top response that you might expect from a, a Mars and fire sign, for instance. And typically with earth, there is a, a real um, desire to be rational with emotions and not to go, get carried away. So that, that won't usually be a problem. Obviously, you have to look at the bigger picture and see uh, what sign the moon is in because if it forms a square, um, like if somebody has the moon in Sag, for instance, and it forms a square, that could indicate a more, um, a greater tendency to have frustration emotionally and feel like they can't express it and then it kind of just explodes or something like that. 
But in this particular case, just talking about uh, Mars in Virgo in and of itself, this is not like a big deal other than just being very, um, maybe sometimes argumentative, um, I mean, uh, critical of others when they feel that um, something isn't quite right. And that's the kind of thing that would irk them if somebody else has been uh, careless. Um, they tend to be very, or I should, should say you, if you're Mars and Virgo, you tend to be very uh, neat. And if you're around people who are sl slobs, that can irk you. And you might just start like um, nagging um, some someone for their bad habits. If they are doing things that are disorganized or unprofessional, that might be the things that really push your buttons. Uh, but it's no, it's not a major thing. Another thing that I should mention too is that Mars and Virgo is quite a nervous energy. A Mars and Virgo person wants to be productive in life. So it's very important, even if, if a parent has a child who's Mars and Virgo, that they provide them with constructive activities that they can participate in and not to just n not have anything available for them to do because they will tend to feel very uncomfortable if they're not accomplishing uh, things that are improving their life, their lives. If they're doing things that are just frivolous, that have no real purpose and that don't advance anything, then they might feel that they're wasting their time. And even as children, they can be very organized and disciplined. Now, in terms of a Virgo person's sexual nature, because they are an earth sign, I think that it's a mistake for anyone to um, underestimate a Virgo person, whether it be the sun in Virgo or, the, or Mars in Virgo. Uh, they can be very earthy in that regard, um, where sex is like considered a natural part of life and not anything bad or gross, although, you know, you do get um, <laughs> Virgos that are germaphobes, you know, uh, OCD again. So they may insist, maybe they would insist that their partner take a shower and they take a shower. Maybe they'll take a shower together with their partner, who knows. But there, there could be that clean freak tendency in the bedroom. I could see something like that. But there is also a tendency to be quite, um, I don't know if inhibited, but that might be the, the right word. So they may have a, a difficult time um, letting someone know how they feel because it's hard for them to make their moves. You know, they're, they're kind of shy. And so it, again, I think it would depend on the sun sign. It might be quite charming if the person has a son in Leo. It might be a nice little balance where when they are in, when they're physically attracted to somebody, they turn quite shy and unsure of themselves. Whereas normally as a Leo, they would be very confident. So, um, it can, it can sometimes be disarming to another person, I would think. Uh, when someone is coming on to them in a way that is very nonchalant and, you know, maybe straightforward, but just kind of casual and things like that, um, quiet. And I think that they also have flexibility sexually. They're not going to be, you know, like Mars and Taurus may be very, uh, set in their ways. Um, maybe Mars in Virgo is more experimental, but still we're talking about earth energy. So I think it's kind of straightforward, um, and things like that. And so overall, I would say that people with Mars 
in Vir- Virgo are really lucky because this is a very good position for being quite organized and disciplined and productive, constructive in one's behavior and one's goals. Okay, well, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you would like a natal chart interpretation, I have the link below for that. So thank you. Bye.